Hey Exoticals, I'm back with another video today. In today's video, I wanted to talk about being the light-skinned sheep of the family. So I'm the lightest one in my family, out of my first cousins on both my mom and my dad's side. There's 13 of us on my mom's side and more than that on my dad's side. I was treated differently than everybody else. I noticed I was pedestalized a lot. I know whenever I would go visit family, I was treated different. My family, they're, in, they're located in the South. And in the South, colorism is real bad. If you are August Alcina's color or darker, you're considered light skin in the South. That's just what it is out there. So, but I am this, I am not white passing, but I'm the same color as the brown paper bag for reference on my complexion. About the same color as Fancy from the Jamie Foxx show. So I remember, when I would stay with my grandma for a few months in between my father's duty stations because he was in the military and he had to go from one duty station to the next but until our new house was ready we had we needed somewhere to stay so we stayed with my grandma for a few months to finish school in her hometown and so when I went to that school that was a culture shock a culture shock for me because I'm coming from a military background so so I grew up around a lot of diverse people from Asian to white I never really experienced being around black people like that as much. So when I go live with my grandma, we're in the hood basically and it's like 95% black. So it's a culture shock for me because not only am I not used to seeing a lot of black people in the same building, but it's also certain mannerisms that I just wasn't. Basically, basically I felt ostracized, I felt different because I was considered, um, I was, what do they say, I, I was acting white. Um, I had that whole thing about me because I talked proper and I wear certain clothes. Oh, I was picked on at that school. Let's just say that. But I did receive a lot of attention from the males, a lot of attention, so much attention that, so my first day of school was two days before Valentine's Day, right? And so Valentine's Day gets here you know, people have saw the new girl and met the new girl and talking about the new girl. And so on Valentine's Day, two days later, you know, before class starts, everybody gathers in the auditorium before the bell rings if you come to school early, because that's where we wait at. And I remember getting there, my mom dropped me off. And when I walked into that auditorium, all eyes were on me. I remember because I wanted to sit with my cousin because I, I saw him. My cousin was way on the other side of the gym, so I wanted to go sit with her. I went from one side of the gym to the other side. Just imagine being at a basketball game or something, and there's a whole bunch of people in the um, stands. And just imagine all of them staring at you as you're walking to your seat across, you know, on the sides and whatever. So that's what happened with me. And so when I sat down, I had a whole bunch of dudes come up and give me gifts i had so many gifts i ain't never had that many gifts before at one time at least 10 guys bought me gifts one guy brought me this huge teddy bear about half the size as me i was like what am i going to do with this thing at school i had so much stuff i needed help i needed a teacher to hold it for me until school let out and so this caused me to get a lot of negative attention from the women unambiguous black women was the majority of the school so those were the women that were giving me a hard time they would pick on me they would not pretend to not purposely not want to be my friend or something or not want to talk to me or give me a look when i walk by or, and stuff like that so it was hard for me to make female friends at this school and so i ended up dating this guy for while i was there and he took me to the school dance and so when I get to the school dance, well, so and so when we get to the school dance, we're dancing, we're having a good time, we're minding our own business to ourselves, me and him. And there's this group of girls near us that always have something, some side remark to say when I'm around, or they always giving me a hard time. And so they saw me and I don't know what happened. I saw them talking and 
stuff like that and then minutes later i'm dancing with my boyfriend we're a little closer than we're, a little, we're not being inappropriate or anything we're just we're actually being appropriate we're just hugging each other and the security officer comes up to me and pulls me to the side and has a conversation with me about how people are talking about how I'm dancing inappropriate and mind you the other girls were actually dancing inappropriate I wasn't they were he needs to let my mother know and I'm like I'm not doing anything inappropriate at all I had to plead my case for no reason and then I remember going back and forth with him about me being innocent and he just I don't know he didn't I don't remember if he believed me or not I just remember not feeling I was like damn for real and then my mom came and picked me up and she didn't believe me either I told her I didn't do anything wrong mind you around this time I'm a I ain't had sex yet I was a good girl I actually wanted to save myself for marriage that's my mindset at the time I was a good Christian girl who just wanted to do the right thing so I wasn't even on that inappropriate stuff and then my mom's not believing me and then a couple of days later I throw up and she automatically assumes I'm pregnant I had to I was in the ninth grade so I had to have been what 13 14 and she's saying all this stuff like you better not be pregnant so I'm like I haven't even had sex yet and so I was getting treated so different even by my mom and I'm gonna do a whole video about my mom because she was a narcissist and she is the reason why I grew up with a lot of self-esteem issues so I want to make a whole separate video about that experience so yeah um I was just mistreated so badly also I remember my mom because she's very narcissistic and she, I remember she would she would rant to me about my father because my father would always cheat on her and stuff and for some reason she wanted to vent to me about it I'm her child for one that's cringy but for two you don't need to tell me this about my dad but she's telling me these things and one thing that stuck out to me about what she said was how she doesn't like light-skinned women because that's who my dad used to always cheat on her with and that he told her that that was his preference before he met her because my mom is about the same color as uh as, as oprah she's the same color as oprah a little darker and so she said this to me but she also was like she doesn't like my father's sister she was high yellow but they never got along but when she would say these things it made me wonder how she felt about me because i was born high yellow but i settled into a light caramel color as i got older but she always treated me different than my my brother and sister i was always treated different me and her never got along we got along better with my other sister more than me i just could never understand why i would be going through the most with her so me growing up i've seen nothing but light-skinned people get mistreated for be basically no reason at all and i remember it just because i didn't understand what colorism was at this time i was still trying to figure out what what it was that made me feel because i thought i was just a black girl like everybody else but people made me feel like i was different in a sense because of my phenotype i guess i learned that later though that it was because of my phenotype that people treated me different because i thought i was just like the black girls on tv but you know watching the exoticals united channel made me realize that those women on tv are exoticals because exoticals are basically the black women on tv and so so when I saw black women on TV that looked like me, I just thought that's how black women look. But as I got older, I learned that my phenotype was unique in a sense because of, I had certain features. I had keener features and lighter skin. Because I noticed like my grandma would always call me light skin. I remember when I was doing my makeup at her house, 
she would come up to me and was like you light skin you don't need to wear no makeup uh, and I didn't understand why she said that this was around the same time I was living with her and then a couple of years later when I go visit South Carolina um, there's this boy I start talking to and we do long distance because I live in Virginia at this point but when I go visit South Carolina you know me and him would talk and then when I'm back in home and when I'm back home in Virginia we would talk on the phone and um, I remember t- talking to him on the phone over here and his father in the background talking about what's up with you and all these light skinned girls you be trying to date so it's stuff like that that I would hear growing up you see it seems like more light skinned people were mistreated in my experience I remember my little cousin when I went over to his house talking about he likes the way that I look and um, I was just not sure what he meant by that but you know when I think back on things years later as an adult it all comes back to colorism and featureism and having a certain phenotype because I have a phenotype I'm basically mixed passing if I wore a certain hair texture weave or something People have to question my race sometimes. Or people come up to me and question my race or have to ask me what I'm mixed with or where am I from. And people would call me light skin like it was a nickname all the time in school and when I was in the army. So it's like, you know, being the lightest one in the family is just like, it came with a lot of ostracization or being the lightest one in the family wasn't as easy as people perceive it to be especially when you're the lightest one in a house filled with unambiguous people who all they think about is skin and phenotypes is skin complexion and phenotype and texturism and all of these things they just pass it on to children innocent children that don't know any better but grow up with complexes because the adults haven't healed from self-hate and trauma and pass it on to their children subconsciously not even realizing the effects the long-term effects that these things can have on especially a young girl where one of the main things that we care about is our beauty and our looks never felt safe around other women who were darker than me because I always noticed a certain energy from them. I didn't do anything. I would never, I'm nice. I never did anything wrong. I'm always friendly when I meet somebody. So when I get certain energies from people, as an adult now, I can figure out and pinpoint what it could possibly be. Because what else could it be? I'm not being mean to you. I'm not rude. But you automatically don't like me though. But it's okay. Because that's why I'm making this channel for women like us who have to deal with people in the community, in the black community, that ostracizes us for the way that we look. Like, we can help that when we can't. So we need to build a support group, a support system. And so, that's all I have to say on this one. Let me know what you guys think. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.